good evening good evening everyone uh, so we are again today for yet another uh, arc webinar program uh, uh, this is an endeavor from isoc to update our ophthalmologist on uh, the regular uh, current topics of ophthalmology and today we have uh, another very important topic that is uh, accurate biometry tips and tricks biometry forms a very important uh, entity for uh, the optimum outcome of a cataract surgery so uh, we should know thoroughly like uh, what are the basic principles of uh, biometry and how to perform accurate biometry so today we have uh, our very uh, well known and prominent speaker dr pk kashyap who would be deliberating on uh, the topic of accurate biometry and uh, we have moderator today who is uh, dr jay gopal agarwal i would like to uh, welcome uh, our president uh, pranav ranjan das uh, ranjan sir uh, vice president uh, of isoc jayanta barwa secretary uh, dr suraj da our uh, 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 scientific chairman uh, dr sabya sachi patnaik chairman arc dr ching sui and uh, the panelists for uh, today's program would be uh, dr devi aishwarya das and dr n k thakur so i'd like to uh, hand over the uh, mic to our president uh, to give the welcome note so the president elect will give the welcome note dr jayanth parwa sir thank you sir jayanth parwa will do the honors a very good evening to all warm welcome to you all to this very very practical and important seminar on accurate accurate biometry tips and tricks biometry along with aol power calculation is a very critical and crucial chapter for the success of cataract surgery with aol implantation at pres at present patient come to us for cataract surgery with very high expectation of post operative results of course it is i us who have educated them to have so high expectation is the right teaching for a patient we tell them it is now not only cataract surgery alone it is cataract and refractive surgery and that they become almost spectacle free for all distances if they opt for a designated type of aol for the purpose but the absolute truth is as we all know very well as yet we do not have an absolutely accurate method formula for calculating the required aol power for all eyes the good aspect is with lot of hard work and extreme perseverance on this subject we have come a long way improved tremendously from the time of sir harold ridley who in spite of successful historical implantation landed up with minus 20 diopter spherical with minus 6 cylinder at 120 degrees of refractive surprise to the present day of rare refractive sur surprises now it is rare but still it is there till date we are in quest of an absolutely accurate instrument formula or formula to bank on to meet the assurance we give to our high expecting patients today we are here to discuss on this challenging subject a very well versed and excellent speaker in dr bp kashyap a very resourceful moderator our jay gopal agarwal and panelist dr devi asuryo das and nilanjan thakur my sincere thanks and appreciation to all arc members and chairman arc dr sangsui for the excellent academic and and endeavor and look forward for further continuation with this appreciable work with this i pass on to the chairman arc thank you thank you sir very good evening to all the dignitaries gathered here let me on behalf of the arc introduce the absolutely accurate moderator of today's function he is none other than dr jay gopal agrawal who has done his mbbs from patna medical college 1978 batch he completed his ms in 1988 
and thereafter he joined Gandhi Eye Hospital Aligarh to ultimately become the principal of the School of Optometry and Orthoptics and later on the Deputy Chief Medical Officer. Presently, Dr. Agrawal is working as a senior consultant at uh, Kurja Holly Family Hospital and he's the director of Agrawal Eye and Research Center, Patna. He has been the past president of Patna Ophthalmic Society and currently he is the vice president of the Bihar Ophthalmological Society. He has, Dr. Agrawal has presented uh, many free papers and instruction courses in many state, various state and national and international conferences. He was awarded the Dr. D.K. Voss Best Free Paper uh, Award of the Bihar Ophthalmological Society. And also in uh, 2022, he was awarded the Best Free Paper Award, K.R. Dutta Award of IJOC. So please, I hand over the honor to moderate uh, uh, this session to Dr. Zay Gopal Agrawal. Thank you, sir. Thank you <clears throat> for your kind introduction. First of all, let me introduce our panelists. Our, there are two panelists, Dr. Devi Ashwarya Das and Dr. Niranjan Kaushik Thakur. First of all, we come to Dr. Devi Ashwarya Das. He is a senior consultant and cataract and cornea and refractive services at Dr. Agrawal Sai Clinic, Katak. She top Odisha in her higher secondary board examination. She graduated from SCB Medical College, Katak, and honors, with honors and gold medal in physiology and ophthalmology. She did her post graduation in ophthalmology from MKCG Medical College, Bahrampur, in 1996. Done her fellowship in comprehensive ophthalmology from Shankara Netrale, Chennai, in 2001, and a short term cornean fellowship from the LBP Hyderabad in 2008. She is trained in refractive surgery and endothelial keratoplasty from Dr. Agarwal's Eye Hospital, Chennai, in 2011. She is awarded uh, by the by an ISOC, Dr. R. C. Meher Intramural Oration Award. She is also the passionate teacher. She was a course coordinator for DNB in her institute and has been guide and co-guide for PG thesis work. She is also the head of the women's ophthalmological wing of Odisha and got le leadership award for her leading and rare eye disease project. Music and literature are soul put for her. Now, sec now second um, uh, <clears throat> panelist is Dr. Niranjan Kaushik Thakur. She has passed his MBBS in 1997 and MS in ophthalmology in 2004 from Guwahati Medical College. She did her one year fellowship in comprehensive ophthalmology from Sri Shankara Deva Netrale, joined Assam Medical Institute Education Services at Silchar Medical College in 2006, and presently working as an associate professor at Silchar Medical College. She wa he was the organizing secretary of OSACON 2018 at Silchar. Presently, he is the Honorary General Secretary of, of Ophthalmic Society of Assam. He has the publication of index journals and a regular speaker at regular state and national conferences. He regularly gives instruction courses in EIOS conference also. Now, with this introduction of the panelist, I should come to the uh, Dr. Kashyap's introduction. It, Dr. Kashyap needs no introduction. He is famous all over the, our eyes of fraternities. Now, even then, as my duty, I have to introduce Dr. Virendra Prashad Kashyap, Director Kashyap Memorial Eye Hospital, Rachi. Passed his MBBS from AFMC Pune University in 1982. Diploma in Ophthalmology in 1986 in the Rachi University. 
done Master of Surgery Ophthalmology in 1989 in Rachi University, fellowship in the um, contact lenses in 1998 from the Calcutta, fellowship in the retina and vitreous um, surgery in 1984 at the Retina Foundation Ahmedabad. He is a life member of many societies, including AIUS, DOS, BOSS, and Isaac, and Joss, and many others. There are numerous societies. There are many awards on his name. There are a few lists of, uh, I have just mentioned it. Best Free Paper Award for, at East John, Eastern Indian Journal of Ophthalmological Congress in 1997. Best Video Film at Jharkhand Ophthalmological Society in November 2004. Chikitsa Ratanas Award by Associate, Association of Medical Services. Best Poster Award at AIOS in Cataract. Best Free Paper Award in Lacrimal Section in, at AIOS. Best Two Minute uh, Innovation Video at Uttarakhand Society. Many orations and live surgery to his credit. National IMA Headquarter Award for um, Community Services and National IMA Headquarter Award for Extraordinary Work for Rural Population. He holds many posts in the organization. He is the Honorary Secretary of the Jharkhand of the Society, Society, Honorary Secretary of Bihar of the Society, Scientific um, uh, Chairman Scientific Committee of JAWS, Chairman Scientific Committee of ISOC also in 2007. Member Managing Committee of you know, All India Ophthalmological Society, Member of Editorial Board of Indian General of Ophthalmology, Chairman of Scientific Committee Jharkhand Ophthalmic Society, President of JAWS and Secretary IMA Ranchi, and Treasurer of IMA Jharkhand State. Along with other fields, he has keen interest in ocular mm, electrophysiology, for which he is regularly presenting paper in AIOS. Now, I will come to our uh, topic of discussion. We are topic of discussion is biometry. I think uh, Dr. Kashyap will uh, elaborately uh, <coughs> give some impression, top practical impression to, uh, to us because this is the very complex subject. And better going not to so much complexity, she, he will do justice and present his lucid paper in a very lucid manner so that everyone can understand and get involved in it. Thank you. Now come, I will hand over the mic to Dr. Kashyap for his deliberations. Thank you, JG. Itna bolne ka zarurat nahi tha. You could have just yeah, said yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, one of the best friend. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that, that, that's it. No doubt. But uh, you should be introduced by uh, to uh, by me to all of us. Uh, so. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. So should we start, sir? Yes, yes. You should start the <laughs> topic. My own means. So, uh, good evening, everybody. All the office bearers, panelists, and everybody. Um, share. And uh, this is... Uh, now it is, uh, yes. It is visible. Right so this is, this is okay. the uh, full slide. So this is not the full, full slide. Yeah, this is the full slide. You know, so, you know, I have got a lot of slides and I'll, I'll try to stick to something very important. And um, in, any, in, in any slide, if you want more clarification and more explanation, I'm, I'm ready for that. And um, Dr. JG is with me. Uh, he's he's a class person on formulas, so Apo, he'll be telling about all those formulas in detail if it's required. So my aim of this topic is to let you know why this uh, A scan biometry is important ultimately to make the patient happy. If he is the person is going to get operated for the cataract, we should know the that the patient uh, what does he want. He, does he want emetropia? He wants to remain a little myopic or a little hypermetropia, which is less common. But then 
uh, even me, if I have to go for the operation, I like to get myself a little undercorrected. I mean, uh, I want to be a little myopic. But in any case, you know, if there is a difference between the two eyes, then uh, you should keep into mind that uh, the difference between the th these two eyes should not be more than three. That is important. There is one aspect of this. And uh, the uh, when we talk about the A-scan biometry, it started with the ultrasound and it's still a lot of people are doing ultrasound and it's, it's still our junior colleagues will uh, purchase the uh, ultrasound machine and they'll have to do it. But the, we, we must talk about the ultrasound. This is very, very essential. Even if you go going for a optical and uh, OCT based and all that, the ultrasound will remain forever, at least for a pretty, pretty long time. Uh, things are changing. So how does this uh, A-scan ultrasound works? It, it, it measures the time, uh, time for the sand to tra traverse, and the it converts into a linear value using the velocity formula. So these, uh, these sounds, they go to the different structures of the eye, like, uh, like cornea, the anterior capsule, the posterior lens capsule and the retina and the, the sclera and it comes back and it tells you what are the, you know, the, the uh, digital value. So, and uh, these can be read by the spikes given by the uh, those uh, reflections. So this is, you know, the age old uh, contact ultrasound uh, biometry being done. So the velocity that normally happens with the entry chamber, the speed is around about 1532 meters per second. The lens is a little higher, that is a little harder, that is higher, that is 1641. So harder is the density, the harder is the consistency, uh, the, the speed is on the higher side. So with this is uh, 1532. Uh, if you talk about the, in, if you measure the uh, IL power in a pseudo faking, if the patient is putting, uh, has been put the PMM material, this, the, the, uh, the, uh, um, the speed is on, uh, still on the higher side, that is 2718. If it is acrylic, it is 2120. And if it's silicon, it's, it depends one kind of a, a centis stroke silicon, all you have used, it could be, Ranging from 980 to 1107 mil per second. Now, if you have, you know, these things, how do you correct while calculating the power? If you are using in a pseudo fake, if you're using a, for the PMMA, you have to add 0 0.40 millimeters. If it is acrylic, 0.2 millimeters. And if you have a silicone oil, because at a slower speed, you have to deduct minus 0.4 to 0.8, depending upon the silicon all uh, that we have put so uh, the uh, the uh, uh, suppose uh, if, if the uh, uh, the axial length that you have measured is uh, something then you have to correct that you add upon four millimeter if you are using a uh, if you the patient is uh, sort of faking by a pma material uh, and but nowadays we are having a non-contact laser interferometry uh, method like IL Master, and now we have got a such sort OCT method also. So uh, it which combines with the uh, axial length and the electrometry, and it it have, we it gives us you know opportunity to have a lot of other formula at the same time. The uh, as a rule, the biometry is done whenever you talk of biometry, you know, statistically and more, you know, uh, um, it means that it is an ultrasound done. It's, it's not biometry. Even 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 the lens when they mention about the A constant, it is it is by the, um, the ultrasound method. If they have got an optical one, they will write that is ultra. If you're using ultrasound biometry, it is. A constant is this. If it is optical biometry, then the ultra the A, A constant is a little different. So uh, uh, th th this part is very very important. Now 
what are the influences of these errors in the target refraction? If it is axial length, the, it deviates quite a bit. If it is corner curvature, it deviates quite a bit. I'll come to that in little de detail. Little detail. If it is anterior chamber depth, again it varies, and the uh, calculation does is not good. And then if you are using a biometric formulas, if it is long eye, then it's different. It's short eye, it's different. And then AL, IL constant is written by the you know the by companies. If you don't correct yourself, you do. If you don't make your own uh, uh, A constant, it'll be it'll be different. But mind you, we get IELTS of what? We get IELTS in 0.5 diopter steps, right? So if you have anything in between, you don't get that lens. So imagine that other deviations are there apart from even if you are doing a fantastic work on A scan biometry, you don't get that kind of a Iron. So that's a that's a problem, and uh, the uh, of course the surgeons on surgically induced astigmatism and then post operative fraction there can be some difference. So these post operative fraction and the surgical induced astigmatism is also a big big factor. So if there is a, if you talk about the uh, axial length. If there's a difference between 0.1 millimeter, there is error of 0.25 diopters. So if it is a difference of one millimeter, it can the deviation could be up 2.4, 2.5 diopters post operative reactions. If the it is a longer eye, you know, it's more forgive, forgiving. So if the longer eye, if there is a little bit of deviation from what, what is the actual one, it doesn't matter much. It matters, but doesn't matter much. But if the short eye, in a hypermetropic eye, if there is a little bit of difference, the, it results in a very, very high uh, difference of power. So we have to be very, very careful, especially when we're doing a short eye examination for AS kind of biometry. So uh, when people ask, you know, uh, when you see, when should be aware ki, uh, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, when should be cautious. So you should know the normal values, right? So the the average axial length is 23.5 millimeters with a range of 22, 22 to 24.5 millimeters. If it is anything beyond this side or that side, you have to be very, very careful. And at the same time, there should not be more difference than 0 0.3 millimeter, millimeters from one eye to the other. Unless you have a, you know, the scleral buckling operation done or an asymmetropy or coronal transplantation done or keratoconus or refractive surgery or hypotony. And the best way to, you know, the uh, correct and verify the axial length is after you have done it, you can do both the the contact method and the both immersion method as well and B scan many a times. So yes, I get all kinds of patients, you know, sometimes very, very difficult to say, what is the real answer? What is the real biometry? So I have, I have a couple of other instruments, you know, even a B scan can help you out. So you take all the measurements and do B scan, B scan also, and the most comparable with length in the IL calculation, you do with that. And preferably those, those should be within 0.1 millimeters. The anterior chamber depth is averagely 3.24 millimeter, but it varies greatly depending upon what kind of refractive error or what kind of the uh, axial length of the patient has. The average lens thickness is 4.63 millimeters, but it also varies. In a very dense hard cataract, it goes up to 7 millimeters uh, in an extremely dense cataract. Now, the importance of this uh, lens thickness has come up much more in a big way because people have started putting the what you call the fakey chyle or ICL. So if the, the, the lens thickness is very high, you be very, very careful the patient because the patient might line in line into the uh, glaucoma and um, a lot of other problems. If you talk about the keratometry, the average uh, reading is 43 to 44. And one eye should not be uh, more than one after difference from the other eye. 
If the patient has undergone a right, skeletal buckle operation, you can always add 0.5 to 1 millimeter to the total eye length, and and then you can calculate it. Initially, you know, nowadays uh, people are more going more for uh, VR surgeries rather than a skeletal buckling. But in our days, when we started skull buckling, so we there was a lengthening the, the length of the eyeball increase. So this is how to compensate for that. So in short, to ensure the machine that that is calibrated and set for the correct velocity, that is, is it for the fakic eye, fakic uh, that is cataract patient, or aphakia, or pseudophakia, or silicon oil filled eye. And the echoes from all the places should come. It should, it should come. It's from the cornea and the anterior capsule, the posterior lens capsule, and the retina. It should be present and in good amplitude. And the misalignment can be identified if we, if the scleral spike is absent. The gain should be at the time to start with. It should be the lowest, and you can keep on increasing if the density is high of the cataract. And the accuracy is very, very essential. Even an error of 0 0.75 DAP in character metal will matter a lot and it give you a difference of IL power calculation. So to summarize, so the character metry that, that to a manual one, you must calibrate it and check the accuracy of the character meter. Use a dedicated single instrument that is known to be accurate. You have been using for so many instruments and you know that this machine is very accurate. You stick to that. Don't touch the corner beforehand and ensure a good tear film is there. Adjust the eyepiece, you know. You don't adjust your eyepiece and start seeing, looking for the, doing the calorimetry, you'll be wrong many a times. You have to check and, you know, focus the cross hairs. Make sure that the patient's other eyes are occluded. That, that will help you. Take an average of three readings. And uh, if your reading is very high, you can ask your other person to buy there is some problem when I'm checking. Can, can you can you do it? Can you repeat it and tell me your finding? That would be good. And whenever there is a difference between the uh, 1.5 adapters between these two eyes, you have to be very, very careful and repeat it. And uh, in a scarred cornea, we might uh, you know the uh, take the fellow eyes or average characteristic cat can be done. I generally use the, the scarred cornea. With the other eye, and uh, but if the scarred eye, if you are doing, if you can take the keratometric reading, I'll use the same reading. But if you cannot do the keratometric reading, I'll use the keratometric reading of the other eye. Now, if you're doing keratometric reading, if you're using a, a, the uh, manual one, then, then the manual one is take it takes the measurement of approximately four to four point five millimeters from the center, and the optical one takes the uh, two point five to three millimeters. So whenever you you know it's it's, it's a um, if you're taking only optical, you can expect a little steeper cornea, and if you're using uh, the manual one, that that is or a flatter one, and this is a a constant. Everybody knows what is a constant in the in the uh, IL packages, and uh, one has to be very very careful. You can start with that. So it the IL lens constant depends on the IL style. What are the optics? What are the haptic flexibility and its angulation? The reaction to the fibrosis in the biometric technique. With the, by this also it affects the lens constant, the axial length, the characteristic, whether it's a manual or, 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 or automatic. Surgical technique also matters. Where do you give the incision? What kind of a rexis you have? Is smaller or bigger or irregular? And the FECO massification techniques also, they can affect your A constant. The lens constant provided by the manufacturer are the theoretical or estimated approximate from the similar lens models. And believe me, most of them are based on apprenation, ultrasound, and manual creativity. So you don't have to use a manual lens constant, but then to start with, yes, you will have to do. So suppose these are the kinds of lenses that you are getting. Uh, and so the, the lens constant has to differ. This is a diagrammatic representation of 
different shape of lenses. If there's a different shape of lenses, they'll sit somewhere else and the, the A constant has to be different. So in Isle Master, that is or optical, it is different A constant. And for the ultrasound, it is a different, different A constant. Uh, this uh, whole uh, value, the value of precedence, they anticipate the aisle to sit in the relation to the cornea. That is, from the cornea to the uh, to the aisle. How, what is the distance? And the constant will de will decrease with an AC aisle as compared to the PC aisle. So the AC aisle, because it's AC aisle sits closer to the cornea, therefore less power is required. Aisle master, yes. You will have to start, and but you must remember that the axial length is longer than the contact or apprehension ultrasound if you are doing the biometry because it is a, it is not touching the eye at all, and uh, an autocorrectometer is typically steeper than the manual one, and for optical biometry the optical lens constants from the package you you can start with or if you do not know the optical biometry of that lens you can check the in the web that is ulib web page it's all given there so you'll have to optimize your own personal a constant very regularly and once done it will do it for a long long time so how do you do it you identify 20 to 30 stable Mind you, stable post-operative patients receiving same IOL. So 20 to 30, stable patient receiving same IOL. And the minimum post-op time should be eight weeks. That is what is recommended. And handling of data with the target refraction is the same like Plano. Record post op refraction and implanted IR. So, what you do is you are, use a tracking sheet to make data entry easier, exclude prior, prior refractive surgery, and while you're doing this, you have to exclude the prior refractive surgery and patient with this path, other pathologies or any other complication during the operation or any other pro problems. So, you have to collect a good data, uncomplicated cases, same in same lenses, you know, for 20 to 30 patients. And you Put it in this, in the lower thing, you will see that uh, it asks you for, you know, the aisle master, the uh, the power that was uh, recommended to you by this and uh, uh, what you put and ultimately post-operatory, what refractive or error did you get, right? So if you put all these things, they tell you to, so how it is done? So, Activate the lens constant optimization function in the IOL master and enter the post op refraction and implanted part and then select optimize function. Except the new, a, new, new constant, then the old constant will be vanished. Continue to repersonalize every 20 to 30 patients, which is not possible, but when you have done it, you can do it with it for a pretty long time. So this is the difference between the apprehension tonometry and the contact tonometry and uh, uh, contact uh, uh, method and the optical biometry. Optical biometry does not touch it. So you can estimate that the, uh, the uh, uh, if you are doing a apprehension uh, uh, biometry, the the uh, exit length has to be a little less because it compresses on the cornea and the Exit length will be little less. And uh, if you are doing a um, immersion method, it will be little more. And if you are doing optical biometry, it will be little more. So this will be the true exit length. So if you have to decide the formula, Dr. JJ is expert in formula. I believe in, you know, if it's less than 20 millimeter is a holiday one, if it is a uh, long, long eye work or Hagee's and other formulas. The, uh, if it is a prior refractive surgery, you go for SRT formula. If, if, if you have to do, calculate the power with the clinical history method, you can go for whole day one. Hagee's is for post, uh, coronary refractive surgery. 
and uh, Hegel's uh, L is the one of the latest ones. And they, uh, there are many, you know, upgraded, a lot of other formulas now available. So, yeah, you can use those formulas. So, uh, it, if you use those formulas, it, if you do use those formulas, uh, these formulas, they matter only if the axial length is different, mind you. So, if you are using a holiday formula, you need axial length, you need keratometric reading. If you're using Hoffer Q formula, you need axial length and K reading. If you're using SRKT, same thing. If you're using Hages, you have to have the ACT as well. If you're doing holiday formulas, then you have to have white to white measurement. So, this is a diagrammatic representation. So, imagine if the, the axial length is almost normal, Almost all the formulas will do good. But if it's very long eye or very short eye, it can matter. So, in, in especially in Isle Master and uh, the newer modalities like Anterion, I'm using Anterion these days. No, no financial interest. They are not giving me any commission. So, you know, they you can calculate these powers with a lot of formulas at the same time. They can be three or four formulas. You can you can calculate and and decide what to how to go about it. So, if the if you use different kinds of uh, IL uh, formulas, you see, uh, if the if the length of the eyeball is twenty two, there's not much of difference. But if the uh, length of the uh, axial length is more or less than 29, is a lot of difference. So, at 20, 20 millimeters of the axial length, almost all the formulas are doing good. So, it, it all depends what is the, uh, the axial length of the patient. So, you can, you have to, you know, slightly modify your ways and use different kind of formulas which suits. And the effective lens position. Whenever we put the intraocular lens inside the eye, it does not, it does, it does not remain where we have put it. Ultimately, it will go to the center of the the limbus. And uh, if it is a very long eye, if it is a very short eye, you can see the what is the effective lens position. And this effective lens position will change the scenario of your visual outcome. And uh, why effective lens? Effective placement of lens is equal to AC plus 4 0 0.4 into lens thickness. So lens thickness is also important. They all vary according to the axial length of the eyeball. So ACT becomes important and ACT becomes important because of the AC and the lens thickness and the effective position of the lens. Now, if there's extremely dense cataract, it creates difficulty as they absorb a lot of sound and passes through the lens. The higher gain setting may be necessary to achieve the adequate thing. And in many cases, you cannot do optical biometry. You, will have, you cannot do bi optical biometry. You cannot do swept source OCT technique method. You can, the only thing is all you can do is you can, you'll have to rely on, a, you have to rely on the uh, ultrasound method. So we have ultrasound method, we have got optical and we have now, we are working with the, the swept source OCT method that is anterior, that works fantastically. If there's posterior stephalma, you have to be very, very careful because the, uh, because the eye is elongated and uh, the ray passes through the macula, but at the macula there's a little tilt and then it gives you a little a wrong uh, findings. So in that case, you have to measure the anterior chamber depth and then measure the posterior chamber, posterior depth, which is step taken from B scan. That will help you. So this is one of the, the problems when the patient has undergone uh, uh, MyPS surgery, refractive surgery. So at present, the Hages, Hages L is supposed to be one of the good ones and they are, they are further modified and uh, so in what happens in uh, the uh, refractive surgery that 
the center part of the cornea becomes flattened and the keratomatic miles are spread over the larger area and now measures the approximately central 4.5 millimeters of the cornea rather than central 3 millimeters. So from the little periphery of the center, the cornea is little kind of not irregular, but they, they are steeper there. So you get a bad corn, bad keratomatic reading and bad calculation. So again, in these cases, the optical and the OCD uh, uh, things, they, they, uh, the machines, they work better. So the uh, correlation, correlation between this coronal power from the clinical history method and IL master K is used in modified Haggis formula. Now for the, you know, the all these uh, post refractive surgeries, there are many more things that have come. Some depend on the clinical history method, the Shama's method, then topographic method. There's something known as when they bypass, the coronary bypass method. And when the original case prior to the refractive surgery is used, entered and calculated. So there are many more methods. And the Dr. Musker study catamitic and biomaterial perform. So they, they, they work with the IL master and this, this all can you can get it. Now, silicone oil, if you have used silicone oil because the, the velocity is much less, you have to calculate accordingly. And these things all are incorporated in the IL master and other um, uh, biometric machines. So it depends where is the where is the lens, whether the lens is in the anterior chamber or in the posterior chamber. The anterior chamber, then acid is going to be different. The posterior chamber, the acid is going to be different. So <clears throat> so if it is the catheter bag, the path, the uh, the catheter bag IL power, uh, then if the power is between 35 plus 35 to plus 25.5, 27.5, then if you're putting that particular lens in a silver circus, you have to adjust the power. Adjust the power by decreasing minus 1.5. If it is plus 27 to plus 17.5, you have to decrease up minus 1 accordingly. So you have to adjust the uh, your lens power depending upon the where you are putting the lens. So I, I I find this thing very very important when I, I I'm in doubt I always go through this I see all these packs are coming properly or not. So why things go wrong? You know people are in a hurry. Aaj das patient karo. Kisi ko jaane ka dene ka nahi hai. So and and. There are lack lack of training, and uh, you have to have a guideline. You have to have a policy. You have to have you know all the people trained that if a thing comes, you have to do this. If it is not that, you go to that, and then ultimately, you know, uh, don't rely on other people. You have to do your best. And technical failure is, you know, not much. It is basically the human error, which is most often. Some common mistakes are, you know, the wrong A constant is selected, wrong formula is used, wrong K reading is entered by hand. It has come good, but then we have, when while writing, they have entered wrong. Biometric printer gets stuck out sometime and read something different. Then incorrectly labeled, I had had a, Problem in one case, which was the you know, the label was incorrect. Then wrong patient is entered in the operation theater, and sometimes you know the there's a reverse IL optics, especially especially the three piece multi piece IL. You know while injecting the leading haptics with a jerk is opens and sometimes you push it and it is you know upside down. So that is going to create problem. And sometimes, you know, by mistake, you put a wrong IL. So what I do in my case is, you know, all the patient's name and uh, power and everything is written on the uh, board in the operation theater. So I, I always uh, verify with the WHO recommended the, uh, the checklist. Sometimes people don't do my biometry, especially in... You know, the blind leaf camps. Oh, average dollar 21.5, it'll do. So that is not acceptable. 
So sometimes it is essential to know the spectacle's power. Many of times, believe me, I have to see the AR finding, the fundus finding, how is whether the patient patient's fundus is looking tessellated, whether the patient look patient's fundus is looking you know myopic. That will also help. So uh, sometimes it happens like yesterday, the IL power came to plus three. They say it's plus three is not extended lens for three pieces. The plus three is not available. Will plus two will do? I said, okay, it will do because, you know, so it will not matter much. It will not matter much because the patient is very, very high biopic and the eyeball is very big. So when the eyeball is big, the, it, you know, it is quite forgiving. You must always take account uh, of the other eye is, is very, very important. So because you see the difference, suppose if the patient has a, having a IL power calculated at 19 and some the, some the other eye is coming at 9, you have to be very, very careful. And we must discuss, suppose, you know, you have done everything. You have done everything, but, you know, you have to discuss with the patient. Even if you dis don't discuss with the patient, my advice is please write on the prescription. Post-operative glasses are expected. That's it. There's no harm. Even if you don't talk to the patient, you write on the prescription, it's good. Because ultimately in case court cases, they say, what have you written? If it is documented, it is done. If it is not documented, it's not done. Whether you have talked to the patient or whatever. So please document that and write that. So. After you have done the operation, ultimately it, the eye will come to the center of the limbus. So you'll have to see what are the post-operative position, the lens that will also affect the uh, the, the the vision of the patient. And uh, <coughs> the if the anterior chamber lens has to be used, then a constant has to be different. The the mechanical different biometry machines may give different results, and it can be quite confusing. Like uh, a scan biometry by other and the IL, IL master and then sometimes you know I have got a variant so you know the, I, if the keratometry is not you know it's not giving good result I do a manual keratometry and then I do a handheld keratometry then a variant then I do a IL master and then ultimately what I see that who are two are nearest and then I, I use that uh, uh, keratometry so Friends, slow down, train and certify your biometric staff. Please take note of that, what I'm saying. Certify your biometric staff. Even if you have trained the person and the person is doing A scan biometry, you have to, you know, kind of a, in documents, you have to see to it that that person is trained for biometry for so many classes. You have taken an examination and he is fine fit. And he is given a privilege to do the biometry. If you have not done, the court will say, who is he? Why should he do? This is wrong. You had a mistake. So please see, train and certify your biometry strong. Always find a follow a guideline. What I do is one person does the biometry. The, and, you know, the things come out and they go into the computer software. But at the same time, it is registered. Put in the register and the one, the person who has done the biometry writes it that he has done it, he does the sign. The other person who has, is also signed, the other optometrist also signed that yes, whatever is written is correct. Then it comes to me. When it comes to me, then I see what are the A scan co constant are used and what are the difference between two eyes and all that. Then I sign. So there are three people checking the uh, biometry finding and IL power calculations. And uh, don't rely on others. Never don't rely on others. And uh, watch out for the unexpected ones. Learn from your own mistakes, particularly when uh, one 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 eye has got a different finding than the other. And audit your own, own outcomes. You have to keep on auditing what is to be done. But if something goes wrong, the whole committee is set, sits down and can see the reasons why it has happened. One more important thing is, you know, uh, when people are very uh, enthusiastic in putting uh, multifocal IL because it, it gives you a lot of money, 
But you have to see to it that the patient's uh, angle alpha and angle kappa are there. It's important. For biometry, for IL power, angle kappa is not important. What is important is angle alpha. Angle alpha is the center of the limbus. So if angle alpha is more than 0.5 millimeters, please do not put any premium lens. Please do not put any premium lens. In other words, if the patient wants to go for a premium lens, just perform the ITS examination and try to find out the high angle alpha. If it is high angle alpha is there, do not consider for the monofocal option if there is a high angle alpha. If it is normal, there is no high angle alpha, then you analyze coronal optical quality. That is for low coronal higher order abrasion. If the higher order abrasion is low, then you can go for a toric conditions. If a higher order abrasion is not low, in that case, you can go for a, you should go for a monofocal options. And if there's a toric calculation, you know, if, the, if this is a, high, a low angle alpha, if there is a low coronal high, higher order abrasion, then the patient is looked for the toric conditions. If it is, if the patient is calculated for toric, let them have go, go for toric. If it is, if it's, if it's not for toric, you can the patient go for any uh, multifocal lenses. Now there are some. We are running out of time. So there are some. There are some very critical situations. We'll have to discuss these things. You know, cataract with a coronal scar. If the coronal scar is less, and we can calculate the power, I'll put the lens. Even if it is a uh, astigmatism, I put the toric lens. If the patient is going for a trabeculectomy, it depends. I if the if the in cases of a cataract with the trabeculectomy, if the toric contact lens, toric lenses is calculated, if it is more than 1.5, I go for a toric lens. And only uh, precaution that I take in trabeculectomy, I, I give a little tighter knot. If the patient is having having pterygium and cataract. The pterygium are two kinds. One is very fleshy and you know, that almost restricts the movement of the eyeball or is a recurrent one. It restricts the movement of the eyeball. If it's just a, you know, the a very thin one, you can go ahead with the cataract and put whatever lens comes. But then if there is a fleshy one, please operate the pterygium first and then do the cataract. If the child is having cataract and is not, not cooperating and his child is above, above the age of three or four or five, but not cooperating, please anesthetize the patient, please uh, put the patient under GA, do the IL power calculation on while in the GA, and then do the uh, operation. If the patient is nystagmus, give him peribulb injection and do the power calculations. We can discuss in, in detail all these things. These are the problems. And sometimes if the toric IL comes, then you can give the, with the uh, do the uh, arcuit incision with the help of manual or uh, variant guided uh, toric uh, arcuit incision, or you can go give the okay. arcuit incision with the help of uh, yeah, running short of time. Lesson, another two three minutes, sir. and yeah. or you can do a toric IL. If in our place when when the the toricity is uh, less than one, we give arcuit incision. If it is more than one, we give a toric IL. So these are the I'll master and uh, we, the specular microscope is essential. We have to, you know, the B scan is a part of A scan. The variant that tells you where to give the incision. If you give the incision somewhere, what will the outcome and what will the IL power cal calculation? There's the anterior and it gives you everything. It gives the higher order abrasions. It gives the anterior chamber depth. It gives you the aqueous depth. It gives you the it, it, it is a very, very useful machine. But, yeah. So this is uh, oculizer and then B-scan is important. And then this, cal the, this is the calculated by the Varion. And it is a toric toricity is also in, you know, calculated. It tells you what kind of a lens they need. 
and it, this is the anterior. The, you see, it tells you the amount of astigmatism, which is the stiffer axis, which is the total coronal wave front. The pachymetry test tells you, it tells you the atmos depth, the total depth, and white to white measurement. Believe me, I have used a lot of instruments that the white to white measurement of the interior is the best one. It's, it's, it's in our study. And uh, one of the things in, in the IL master, you know, you, you will see that uh, in, the, uh, oh, uh, the, in the right eye, it's written AL 22.34 millimeters SNR 58.0. What is SNR? Sound noise ratio, which I learned very recently. I think if anybody is in the, knows about all this, I am interested to know more. And you, regularly we have to do the spectral count, then wave light is there to see. And that's it. Thank you from my side. Any question, I'd like to take it. Thank you, Dr. Kashyap, for your elaborate uh, presentation on the biometry. Actually, there are two aspects of biometry. First is uh, ocular measurement. Another is the formula which should be applied. Yeah. The first we go for the ocular measurement. I want to ask uh, panelists also, you, uh, Dr. Ashwara Rajdas, whether we should go for optical biometry or we should go, for, we should stick to the ultrasound biometry. Because uh, Dr. Kashyap he started with the uh, ultrasound biometry and he stressed the need of the hour, but the, I think that it, there should must be some difference of opinion uh, from your side. Please. Uh, like uh, Dr. Kashyap said, uh, ultrasound is uh, definitely uh, the machine that with every practitioner starts with. Uh, like uh, soil master, uh, definitely it makes life more simpler. But uh, we always must have a fallback machine because sometimes in very dense cataract situations, in some very uh, typical situations, we will also need to again uh, recheck with ultrasound the machine. Yeah. So we need both. Ultrasound is good enough. Uh, but uh, the what is more important is striking the consistency in measurement. Not just the machine is not as important as uh, striking the consistency with that. Like sometimes. Uh, we can cross check an IL bar that we take out an IL master and cross check it with ultrasound machine sometimes to know whether we are running accurate or not. And uh, there are some situations where you should you must use the ultrasound machine. Yes, yes. Like very because, because it's yeah. not steady, we need the ultrasound machine. But uh, other Otherwise, you, what you would prefer, it is an optical biometer that it should be preferred or is it ultrasound? Or if it is ultrasound, do you find, do you know, uh, do you think that uh, it will give good result? But uh, in my experience, ultrasound gives the result okay, but uh, it is not good, accurate result. Uh, yeah. But, uh, optical biometry but, makes uh, things much more simpler and much more predictable. Yes. Uh, inter uh, user Inter-user difference is much less in an optical biometry as compared to an ultrasound biometry. Uh, uh, Dr. Agarwal, can I ask you why Why do you say that ultrasound method is not, uh, not predictable? I mean, because because, because, because uh, when you use the ultrasound probe, it presses the cornea. That gives some error. That, 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 and again, that, that, that is a handling mistake. That is not yeah, the mistake. That, of the that, and mistake. again, the mm -hmm. ultrasound measures the uh, anterior corneal surface to the uh, anterior surface of the uh, retina. But, and that is over the foveal cup, not up to the mm -hmm. RPE layer. So, so there, uh, is a, there is a difference of uh, one. one the difference of length. But, but the vision that is being formed is being formed at the surface of the phobia, not at the RP level. Mm -hmm. Right? The striking mm -hmm. level of the wall is different for two machines. Right? That is that is there. And that is why the formula that is compensated with the IOL master and the ultrasound biometry. Ultrasound. Yeah. So in ultrasound biometry, there is the uh, interpersonal uh, variation. There can be an it's error it's because, of, uh, because of indentation. That is a Manual mistake which is being committed by the operator. Even, even, even you touch the even you touch the cornea, that will be some depression or indentation. Then do a it, it is not possible that without indentation you can do, do a, a biometry. Do a, do a biometry. 
do a merchant uh, buyer yes that is that is different that is better than the direct contact ट Yes, I have, I I have asked this question only because they they, they will be asked. Dr. Leha is there, Doctor Surbi, Doctor Lakshmi. Just ask them if they want to know anything. Yes, Doctor Agarwal. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. So you are saying yes. is it is it open for all? No, no. Just ask yeah. them name name and ask them whether they want to. Otherwise, unlo aayega nahi kabi bhi. No, no, no. Whether I I ask them that whether they have been taught about these three uh, these things in their classes or Dr. if you want to if you I want to Dr. Neha, Dr. Agarwal is asking a question. Dr. Neha, can you answer that? Dr. Neha, are you there? All are muted, Dr. Surbi. Acha sir, acha ek minute, sir. My Dr. J G, tell me one thing. When was the first A scan installed in Bihar and Jharkhand? In 1989, when the AI was started, it was started before that. What did they do? They put 21.5 thakak under bus. So, put, put doing a ultrasound contact method is better than not doing ultrasound, not doing calculation at all. Yeah, yes, exactly. immersion yeah. is immersion is better than contact. Yes. Optical is better than ultrasound. Yes. these oct based all these things are better okay. than optical but then the the base the ultrasound is still required in many many cases you can't do without it you can't yes. do without it yeah so there's one more point i wanted to say like uh, i think dry eye taking care of the dry eye is yes very it is very important very, very important yes 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 so i think that uh, i think uh, that is the first ma major source of uh, error Very and good. also a major source of patient dissatisfaction after a good cataract surgery yeah yeah one one more question i just wanted to ask dr kashyap and dr agarwal both of them so while doing a optical biometry if you put a lubricating eye drop 0.5% cmc will that have an impact or will have a good result on that any of the cornea just put a drop of lubricating eye drop it, it will give a half a minute and then do the optical biometry it it will give the good result because uh, almost uh, in our area almost 80% has been suffering from the dry eye in some way so it is better to put uh, lubricant eye drop at least 3 or 4 days prior to the surgery no no just before the just no, before it, that the will also that will also help 5 minutes before the optical biometry i mean this is what i have been practicing i've been telling people who do the optical biometer in my clinic to put a 0.5% uh, methyl cellulose eye drop just 5 minutes before they take the optical biometry report result that is a good practice there's no doubt no no the no, okay. policy in our hospital is ask the patient to blink more frequently and take thak 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 fast number no, one no, number no. two if it is not coming and it is you know deviating every time put a drop of the methyl cellulose Uh, you you can also guess with the while uh, give uh, the, because your biometer gives the picture of the yeah. corneal cl clarity if yeah. it is very clear then no need otherwise it is yeah. it is needed because in some part of the cornea there will be distortion of the image yeah, but but what dr kashyap mentioned blinking ask the patient to blink before you take the reading that is really good mm. and the other thing is uh, most of the times they must have been examined in the opd and paracan on, on that must have been put So get the add dryness to that. So that yes. is also important. So we I, can. I normally avoid that. I do it on a virgin eye and then take the ocular pressure and put xylocaine. The virgin is a eye is always good for a for a biometric result. No, you can you know you can have have a policy of what procedure is to be done, what investigation is to be done when. When number one, number two, number three, number four. So if you do that, if you make that, there will not much of problem. Like we have. Uh, And, and no. any of the postgraduates are there any of the postgraduates dr lakshmi dr surabhi yeah. 
you know, please, please, you come. I mean, we are awaiting your uh, queries and your interaction. We would love to do that. Anyone, any one of you who are here and then want to have a query? EGs and all, they yes. must unmute themselves. Dr. Surabi, yes. I mean, this. Yeah, you can this ask the, uh, the speaker, you can ask the uh, panelists or the moderator to, or any one of us. Please. Yes, uh, good evening, uh, good evening. sir. Um, sir, I'm Dr. Surabhi Prasad, uh, PGT from Silja Medical College. So my question is, sir, uh, while doing triple procedure, sir, cataract surgery with uh, keratoplasty uh, simultaneously. So, sir, uh, we calculate the IL power based on his uh, the patient's pre-op uh, corneal curvature. So, but after keratoplasty, the corneal curvature is changed of the patient. So, does this have any effect on his uh, post-op refractive status or the IOL power? Very much. Very hmm. much. Yes. You see, when you are, first of all, it is very difficult to take out the power. You rely, rely on the, uh, the IOL power calculation of the other, right? Number one. Number two, it all depends how much stitches are you giving. It all depends how much during the tightening. It all depends whether you're giving continuous sutures or interpret sutures or how uh, buried sutures, it all it depends on that. So, corneal grafting and IL power is altogether different ball game. So, one person can, you know, do the auditing, do the auditing, and then they can, you know, find out, key, okay, so this is the way I can do it, and the power will come this. So, I'll give you one example. One, one example, like uncontrolled blind eye with very high intraocular pressure. I do a TSPC, transcular photocoagulation. So people say that if you do a TSPC, the Bible Balkan can go blah, 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 thysical and this and that. So in three, four, five years, I have, you know, the uh, done the art, I've seen all these. The, so I know how much to do, how much the power to be given, how much duration is to be given, and then ultimately you come that okay, if it is this, I'll do this much, and the pressure will remain, and I'll not go thysical. That's how you know that this this is the way you have to do it for the, uh, the triple procedure also. Okay, thank okay, you, thank sir. You, sir. Uh, Doctor Agarwal, yeah. one one query, which is the best. Uh, I will formula. And now, yes, yes, I want to come to that point because one part is the uh, uh, measurement, of the measure, measurement of the eye, eye, uh, axial length on keratometry, and another part is the uh, formulae. Now, uh, Dr. Kashyap has mentioned a lot of formulae, and uh, that is uh, actually. Uh, um, he has made many formulas depending upon the axial length and these, these are good practice, but it was the, uh, not the current practice. It actually, uh, we are going for uh, newer uh, formulas like uh, um, Barrett's and EVO, Keynes and uh, other uh, artificial intelligence based formulas because these formulas are more accurate than others and also that we uh, should avoid those formulas, especially the regression formula. And another is the point is that that we should use the, those formula which is not dependent upon the expected lens position, because these two things are very problematic for the calculation of the IR. So Barrett is though it is a slightly regression aspect is there, but how it is calculated is not. Uh, known to everybody because it is totally uh, not mentioned by the uh, Professor Barrett. But uh, other formulas like Olesan and EVO, the, there is uh, no expected lens position. Even in the art, art, uh, artificial intelligence based formula, these are not uh, based on the expected lens position because one great problem of the, for the IL power calculation is the expected lens position because what we expect from this that is uh, that should be the expected lens position post operatively it might not be so the, these gives the very inaccurate result so uh, better use those formulas which are not based on the expected lens position so in this way the uh, we uh, at present we have Keynes we have EVO we have artificial intelligence formula. Even the Barrett formula is very good, but how it is calculated is not mentioned in the text. 
No, no, I, I, I what depend, about the, I, I, I depend on Dr. The online for formulas. The formulas yeah. But one thing I just want to ask you, no matter what formula we use, but the fact of the actual lens positioning, hmm. how can you deny that? If the patient is mapping, wo kahan ja ke no, that is the problem. That is, is the more problem. anterior. Yeah. If so, one haptic is above the anterior capsule, one is behind the anterior capsule. Wo kaha better? Us how can you? How can you? No, uh, that so that's that. why I'm that's why I'm telling you know, all of you that uh, those formulas which is dependent upon the expected lens position is not giving the good results. But those formulas which are mm, independent of expected lens position are very good gives you very good results so in this way uh, we have uh, many formulas like canes like evo like other artificial intelligence based formula they are very good but sir the sir, barrett like, universal the barrett universal formula which says the expected lens position i think is uh, universally i think many people are happy with that formula yeah, yes yeah, that that's why i'm telling it it is though it is a regression formula uh, but uh, how it is calculated it is not it's, uh, it is not mentioned by professor barrett because it no, is of course yeah, I agreed that uh, I think um, uh, it requires some reading actually, which the all the biometry uh, biometers doesn't have. Like uh, maybe you know, say only some. Uh, but, but I will the, master the, seven hundred the later editions or the anterior. They will have a white to white uh, this thing, which is required, I think, for this. So probably they. Also, the, thing, but, uh, yes, uh, hmm. Barrett uh, uh, formula uses five variables, but even those uh, cases like uh, long eye and short eye. Uh, Barrett formula is not good. In that sir, case, sir, I, I, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. My point is, if the eye is normal, formula. any formula, any formula is good, as I showed in my slide. Less will, yeah. People fancy about Barrett and recent more, you know, uh, formulas. But basic formula, and the eye is good. Typical, usual, average, any formula will do, sir. Any yeah. formula will do. I'll give you better, better that. If there's a difference of 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.3, it doesn't help you, sir. Yeah, and many not. times the posterior uh, curvature and posterior, uh, uh, <laughs> this thing is all calculated and if it's not there, they admittedly add 0.25 or something. So, actually, in practice, they don't... Uh, matter much but people should know all this that if it is high or low or long or short and then if it is more estimated looking bad you know so you have to you know to calculate and modify your uh, formula accordingly in those cases uh, artificial intelligence based formula like uh, uh, hill uh, RB, rba formula and even lada super formula they are very good they are giving the very accurate result they, and uh, if because they are uh, actually uh, based on the uh, uh, pa pattern recognition based idea because uh, in those cases uh, lakhs of uh, data has been put in the cloud and we uh, we just um, upload the data from the of the patient and they match it and they give the almost a very good result pana sir ha sir aap ek bataiye ek baat bataiye no matter what do you do no no i do you do 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 you do you do you get zero zero no why yeah yeah i rely on what you said 22 to 24 any formula is good i rely on that i have got a iol master i'm very very happy with that i've got a um, uh, ultrasound machine that also gives good result so it's not uh, i mean theoretical things are always there but i basically rely on those factor what you have just mentioned hey, dr gj has a lot of both, both have he's, he's he's a lot of formula yeah, he's done done Dr. lot of. Dr. is a master in form. I respect him. But uh, he'll but, he'll he'll teach me mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But whether that is practical and whether 
he uses it practically in his day to day patient or not i mean literatures and all they are there no like, i i use barrett formula generally uh, barrett, but in some eyes i say me but in some eyes uh, i use uh, uh, hill hill rbf formula even the letter super formula but i can tell you one thing i've got a il5 500 i have not upgraded to il700 il500 i have been using for last 8 9 years without any um, financial interest it has given me wonderful results exactly sir sir i have a question and then for what you. what secondly what you mentioned that in a, in the prescription you should be writing that every patient who undergoes a cataract surgery should expect some refractive error at the end yeah. that yeah. i am going to mention from tomorrow yeah yes yes that is a very good yes. practice and we, it is well uh, mentioned by dr i think fact that i could uh, get from this webinar that that this thing should be mentioned yes sir yes. i will also do that same thing sir please help me on one thing tell me what is snr what is sound noise ratio in biometry for al master 500 i'll have to do a research i don't know my yeah, sound uh, sound noise, noise ratio must be not be very high Otherwise, uh, your uh, calculation will uh, something it, something different. SNR is not in the five hundred. I think it is in the IOL seven hundred. It's in five hundred. It's in five hundred. It is in five hundred. It's in five hundred. I don't know then. And because because our uh, other yeah. panelist, uh, Doctor uh, Nilanjan Thakur, is uh, they are sitting silently, so yeah, I think the, you can also chip Thakur, in. Doctor Thakur, I think you, we want your comment. Yeah. Good evening. Actually, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, 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 very much. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This actually uh, is very. I'm very happy to hear. But we we love to have an IOL master. But thing is that ultrasound. What I feel is immersion technique is a fantastic technique. So uh, and according to uh, Dr. Agarwal has said about the effective lens position. So effective lens position, uh, from my view, is not much of uh, this thing. It gives some point two five to point five that much of variations. but main important is the axial length and the uh, your the uh, keratometry plus definitely barrett formula is a very good formula which i use for toric intraocular lens for my toric uh, these things we use it but uh, definitely everybody loves to have an il master i haven't worked with il master but uh, immersion technique is a very good technique uh, because uh, out of 100 cases 90 cases are very good with immersion then we get some surprises maybe due to some variations and all <coughs> so another uh, as madam uh, dr das has said about the tear film instability that is also another big factor so and variations we are definitely have to know about the longer eyes shorter eyes post keratoplasty so as my pg has showed uh, told about the triple procedures which you have done over here so these are challenging cases but for me if you are not having an il master immersion technique is a very good technique thank you very true no there are uh, there are definitely ma, ma, when uh, il master or any of this optical biometer come in handy but uh, i think um, uh, uh, as all of us are practicing in a country like ours i think you know at least about uh, at least 5 to 10% i think you know, patients come in with you know very mature great five uh, and you know, cataract and thick posterior subcapsular cataract are still seen uh, quite frequently so um, i think uh, we can't i mean we just can't afford not to have a um, ultrasound machine actually with us ultrasound machine there's definitely you no know, like dr gj i don't know, I don't I know, know how, how much is the, what is the gj 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 a question hai uh. suppose if there is a kid right yes and uh, if you want to uh, and the patient is very uncooperative yes and the patient is fakeic fakeic yes sorry sorry fakeic yes operated by uh, dr panoranjan in the child yes. <laughs> now is come to dr gj uh, very uncooperative now he has to put a second knee implant how do you proceed sir if if for the biometric part we uh, He has to. We have to do bi biometry in uh, under GA. Otherwise, it's not possible because it is un one cooperative. And after that, uh, uh, if it is if he is faking, then uh, uh, at what what will be the what is the age of the patient? 
A, age of the patient is nine years age, number one. Number two, the patient had cataract and no kind of this thing, you know, it worked. Mm. So, and even at the on the operation theater, it did not take the reading. The patient had to make a fake it. Now, how do you proceed? But we go for the biometry in the under GA and then go for the vitectomy part and uh, we clear the anterior anterior uh, vitreous and then we then we decide whether we can put it in the anterior chamber lens or we can go for the scleral fixation lenses. Otherwise, I don't I don't think there's any other uh, choice for us. Sir, first, you did not get my question. My yeah, question first, is first, my, first. Quest my question is. You know, you have done all the methods, uh, the patient is under G, you have done all the methods, it's not taking reading, it's not taking reading, right? Now, you have to oh. do the operation for the cataract, you have to do it, you mm -hmm. have to clear the visual axis, you have done the cataract, the patient is now off a key. Now, how do you proceed? You want to put the lens inside, what do you do now? Without any measurement. We can no, you tell me how to go about it. <laughs> Yes, he, anyone can can uh, join us. Dr. Ashwarya, you have an answer. No? Sir, we can do the other eye, other eye measurement if this eye is not taking anything. Yes, yes, yes. 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 The back vertex distance. What is it? Suppose if I am doing a refraction, the, the refraction is coming to plus 10. It neutralizes the plus 10, right? So now how do how what do I do now? How do I calculate the power? Uh, there, there is an average formula. No, if you have a plus ten, you add plus eight to it. There is some formula to it by which you can do the calculation of the IOL. That is that gives you an average result. But tell me one thing: you are saying it's a eight year old child. Why why can't you do a, 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 a this thing a IOL calculation? You can do an ultrasound method by which you can take the axial length. The corneal curvature you can always take after doing it in a GA and then calculate the lens part. And um, that lens also at the age of nine, there is a formula um, as to um, what power you have to detect and then put place the lens. On the table, the patient had cataract under GA. The all the machines could not work, did not give any finding. Then we ultimately we have to remove the cataract. We remove the cataract. Now we can see the fundus. Now I can do the refraction. It is plus 10. Now I want to put the lens inside. Now, how do you calculate the power? What what power should we put in? I that's think just question. add plus 8 to it. I mean, if it is, is plus, a, add plus uh, 8. The, no, the exit length to actually the deduction, can we do that? After 10% deduction of 2 to 8 years. So, uh, if it is the exit length method for the pediatric cataracts, one is that uh, if you beforehand, once you're going for the operation, if you are doing that, uh, by, uh, this, uh, if it is according to exit length, if you, uh, after doing the biometry and the keratometry reading. And no, he is saying that the yeah. exit length can't be measured. He is saying that the exit that length is the problem. Be the length it it can't be measured. Measured. All, all the exit length is, is easy. Mm. Sir, you Hello. tell us that, sir. I think. Ah, sir, sir, I think. Yes, ah, hey, what? What? Hey, what? Uh, what, 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 what? Yeah. What I am doing is the refraction should be done by an expert like me, <laughs> <laughs> and the usual refraction, usual distance, right? Usual distance, and you find that if the power is at, at a one meter distance, your power is plus ten. Multiply it by 2.5, right? You get the almost good power calculation. You put it in. Uske baad kya hoga? They might be minus one or plus one. So it will be taken care by the uh, glasses. So that's what I do. 
What is your opinion? Sir, why 2.5? Uh, it has been suggested by somebody. I'm doing it and, uh, and I'm finding it good, sir. If it is 10, multiply 2.5, it does the work. But uh, same situation, same thing has been uh, also mentioned by Dr. Pranav. He added uh, 8.5. Yeah. yeah. So that he is giving, he is giving, he is giving plus 18, and I am giving much more than that. Uh, yes, you are giving much more than that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I face a situation like this. Yeah. Maybe so if we if we remember case. if we remember our Bing Horst who put yeah. a pre preparatory lens, he came up with the same error that existed prior to the surgery it, with an eighteen diopter lens. Am I? Uh, we could not understand you, sir. Sir. The case of Dr. Binghorst, who put in put in an 18 diopter IOL in a patient, and after, he had a result the same as after after uh, he had a result after surgery, which was equal to the uh, result before surgery. Means that pre-operative and post-operative regimes are almost the same. Situation. Yeah, refractory, refractory status was the same. But but that was a pre-pupillary lens. And on this we can. I think I think, I think I'll, I'll I'll request the panelists to try this. If you have such situations, even in an adult. What you can because we have to you know the combine the operation of anterior segment and posterior segment and a lot of things together. So in such situations, I have been I am doing um, the uh, refraction on the table and uh, multiplied by two point five, and I am very happy with the result. To be very but frank, you are you are telling that the post operative refraction is uh, plus ten, and you are multiplying with uh, plus ten. In uh, apply, uh, multiplied by 2.5, that is 25. 25 diopters. Mm -hmm. uh, to be very frank, um, uh, I mean, to imagine a situation where you cannot do uh, uh, ultrasound uh, and you cannot distinct, I yeah. think uh, that would be very, very rare. That is Dr. Kashmir. I told you, as I told you, that we are doing many surgeries. Combined, you know, anterior segment and posterior segment surgery combined. So we get this situation, you know, very frequently. So okay. for adults, too, you can definitely do a biometry later on if you're putting a secondary IOL. Yeah. So definitely yeah. you can calculate yeah. that. For for pediatric cases, if it is below two years, it's the most uh, that uh, plus 8.5 also, Ranjan sir, I, I have not uh, seen that also. No, but, I, I, uh, I think I read somewhere. I mean, I'm not sure about it, but I read yeah. somewhere. But that, mainly you know, we, they, follow sir, the, we, follow the, we follow the axial length formula. That is the best yeah. formula. If, if it's below two years, deduct 20% from the biometry yes, and yes. for the power. And if it is two to eight years, deduct 10%. Yes. So that is and the best that, method. That, yeah, that is yeah. a well-mentioned, you know, well-mentioned formula. You're not able, you, you, people follow that. Yeah, secondary, yeah. I will, if you're having some complications, if you're not, so that way you can measure. If you're putting the sulcus, then deduct 0.5. From that, if you are putting up the uh, the lenses, you are not able to put in the bag, and you are putting in the sulcus, then okay. you that way you do the deductions and all. Yeah. Okay. That's so that's I feel okay. that is more scientific. Dr. Yeah. Thakur, yeah. that is okay. That is understandable. But the discussion was a situation where topics. you could not do could the not do thing, thing, you know. Which, 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 <laughs> which, 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 we said, you know, it's difficult to find. But there is more chance that you can't do a keratometry, but usually you can do an axial lens. Excellent, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. But you can't do it this side and doing the other eye and give an IOL comparative eye. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Refraction. Right, that can be. So it will be a very rare situation where you can't do an axial link. That is my um, the whole argument, basically. Anyway, so I think, uh, Dr. Uh, G, uh, Agrawal, sir, I think you please continue. And I know. think uh, we are uh, almost half an hour. Uh, we have exceeded. So, yeah. yeah. Not behind, we have exceeded half an hour. I mean, yeah, we have exceeded half an hour by half an hour. Mm.
if any other to... if any other question to be any other problems to be discussed regarding biometry if the pg students are there they, whether they can they have any other problems in other situations so can we can discuss the, those problems Yeah, Sir, how you will get the keratometry readings in uh, iris coloboma or microcornea patients? Keratometry reading in iris coloboma? Yes, Can be done. It is, it is simple. It is no, no problem. <laughs> it is keratometry reading. You can, you can take it. Any keratometry can, can give you the but reading. What about microcornea cases? Microcornea. microcornea. Again, you can do it. If there is no nystagmus, you do it the way that you bring yes, it. Yes, you can, we can do it. If no. there is nystagmus, then it becomes an issue. Yes. Okay. Again, in nystagmus cases, you have to inject the patient, make the patient uh, a, a kinetic, and then you can do it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Or maybe under GA also you can do it. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. If the patient is a kid, then GA. Otherwise, you know, give a peribulb injection and uh, do the measurement. Dr. Mosmi also wants to ask something. Or? Yeah, yes, good evening, sir. Myself, Dr. Mosmi. Sir, my question is, in the piggyback circumstances, how we will calculate IL power? Simple. Very simple. You calculate the power uh, by the pseudo faking method. And then, and then the the the, the uh, you have to add the power which comes in the refraction. It is simply it is simple that what is the error is coming, you just add it on there. Otherwise, uh, it is not very difficult. Yeah, it is a recommended and uh, well. Uh, Justified and studied uh, uh, thing to put the how to calculate the piggyback lenses. Thank you, sir. Mosmi, how many cataracts have you done? Sir, um, sir, I am in second year residence. I started uh, initial stages. So I didn't do any cases till now. Okay. Are you doing a biometry yourself or uh, watching the optometrist doing it? Sir, I am doing biometry so myself. Very nice. You should. You should. Then you know the real problems. Are you using the optical biometer or the ultrasound biometer? So both optical and ultrasound. You are from uh, Dr. Mosmi is from uh, Rims, Ranchi, right? Yes, sir. Right. Okay, fine. That's excellent. Okay, bagal gire, sir. I see the Shakari. Good. Good, Mosami. I like it. I love it. And uh, wave front and uh, OCT based. Kabi uh, so you can come to our place. We'll tell you. It's, it's very simple and, and it's very, very informative. It gives you all the information. And in my study of uh, white to white uh, width, white to white measurement of the cornea. While doing a IPL or fakey cal, whatever you call it, this, this, this is the most accurate one. The, the next digital and the anterior and white to white is almost same. So that's that's the, the more important information I just wanted to share. Thank you, sir. I think, sir, GG, sir. Shall we conclude? conclude. If anything left to discuss, from any from anybody? No. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Um, uh, thank you so much. Uh, since uh, our uh, chairman scientific committee is also not there. Uh, I'll just go ahead with the straight word of thanks. Uh, first of all, on behalf of the whole ARC family and the ISO family, I want to uh, thank you.
panelists dr devi aswarya das ma'am and dr nk thakur who has been really uh, contributing such uh, in a such a beautiful way the residents especially dr mosmi dr neha dr surabi and dr lakshmi for their active participation and making this uh, webinar uh, much more vibrant also i wish to thank the president dr pranab prasad sir who has always been the backbone and uh, the main supporting figure uh, for this arc webinars thank you so much sir uh, thanks again to our respected president elect uh, uh, dr sir uh, barwa for your uh, um active participation and uh, in the discussion as well as your uh, kindly conducting the honors for this webinar I'd like to thank uh, dr uh, swaras bhattacharji the honorary secretary who is uh, who was here briefly but uh, i think he is just left by there probably i think he is driving thank you so much sir dr so much thanks to dr lobsang satim our joint secretary aizog for his active participation and uh, last but not the least we would like to thank anthod pharma for kindly hosting this uh, webinar and making this whole uh, uh, function uh, possible thank you so much sir thank you so thank much you, sir. thank you so much long live pfizer thank, 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 so thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you so the arc meets in march in april in After april the... sir we'll give a skip for the march session because of the aoc Okay. Uh, so everybody is uh, right on colliding with the AOC death. So uh, we'll all be meeting in the uh, at Calcutta. Yes, yes. <laughs> physically, yes. physically. Let us meet. And, and the RC will be meeting definitely in April here. Yes. <laughs> so for thank the so RC, we'll be meeting again in the April, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. So thank, much. You so thank you. Thank, thank you. you all of you. Right, sir. Thank, thank, thank you very you. much, sir. Thank you very much for thank giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank we'll do it again. Yes. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Kastev, for giving some tips. Thank you, thank you. आपको क्या tip देना सर? मैं तो I learned from you all the formulas. You were a real mathematician. Why did you become a doctor? You could have become an engineer. By this time, you were uh, driving a, launching a rocket. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night.